All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to look at how to graph rational functions by hand. Uh, the reason we're doing this is to make sure we understand how the calculator is doing it so we can verify it on the calculator that it does it correctly. So first of all, you're going to simplify f, uh, or simplify the function. That makes sure you're simplifying it by crossing out any common factors in the numerator and the denominator. That's what we're really going to be looking for. And then we're going to go through and just do some basic graphing stuff. We're going to plot the y-intercept. That's by finding f of 0. We're going to find the zeros in the numerator because those will be our x-intercepts and graph those. And we're going to find the zeros of the denominator um, because that will give us our vertical asymptotes. And we're going to find our horizontal asymptotes. Once all that's graphed, then we'll just have to start making an xy table uh, or f of x, uh, x, f of x table and plot points between and beyond each um, intercept and vertical asymptotes so that we can see what's happening in each region. And then we'll just connect everything with a smooth curve and check it with the calculator. So let's go ahead and try a few. I'm going to start with a simple one here. I have these down here so we can refer to them quickly. So we'll go ahead and look. 1 over x will simplify. That doesn't simplify any. We're done with that first one. Check. And we're going to plot the y-intercept. So f of 0. We've got to find f of 0. So if we look at f of 0, f of 0 is going to be 1 over 0 plus 2. That's 1 over 2. It's a half. So if I go over here at 0 and a half, I have my first point. So we can also start a little xy table over here. So we can remember what they are. 0, we had a half. Okay, then we're going to plot the zeros in the numerator. This one has no zeros in the numerator, so easy there. It means there'll be no x-intercepts, so we won't be crossing this. Then zeros of the denominator. The denominator is 0 when x plus 2 equals 0. So when x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 2. That's the 0 of the denominator. So it's not in our domain. So we go ahead and put in a horizontal asymptote, or a vertical asymptote, but x equals negative 2. That will be right here. So we'll go ahead and put that in. So we know we have one there. Now we're going to look for our horizontal asymptote. So you look back at page 144, and you know that the degree here of this numerator is zero. So, oops. So, n, degree of n is zero, and the degree of the denominator is one. So, zero is less than one. So, back on page 144, you look when zero, when the numerator is less than the denominator, it says our line, our, hor our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So we'll go ahead and put in y equals 0 as our horizontal asymptote. Another vertical asymptote, we don't want to have it. So now we're ready to graph and look at different points. So we know a point over here already, so we can guess that this is going to be something like this. We just need to know if we're over here or over here. So we're going to pick a point back over here and plug it in. Let's do negative 3. So I can plug in negative 3. If I look at negative 3, negative 3 plus 2, negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So negative 3 is negative 1. If we graph that in the same color. So we have that point. I'm going to sketch just a few more points so we can see how they are. So I'll, I'm going to pick uh, 1. 1 plus 1 is 3. 1 over 3. If I plug in 1, I'm at 1 over 3 or 1 third. So 1 over 3 is 1 third. That's a little bit less than the half, so we're getting smaller down here. Now let's plot 1 over here just to see if we're truly going up. If I put a negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1 over 1 is 1, so that's right here. So this one, I can clearly kind of just sketch this in here like this. And likewise, I can go over here and craft some. I'm going to pick negative. There's two, three, four. Let's try negative four. If I do negative four, negative four plus two is negative two. One over negative two, that's over here. So now we're getting half again. Negative a half. And if I was to plot some, you can see if I did half, they're going to be like this. So we can kind of just tell. 
that's the graph. And that's that's what I want you to be able to do. That simple. It's not a hard process. We should be able to find it really quick. We just sketch it. Even if you don't sketch it exactly, we get the idea. We know where we're at approximately. So it shouldn't be a problem just to sketch them. The idea is to get a rough idea and kind of picture it in your head once you know the as asymptotes. You should be able to kind of see where they are, at least have an idea. So let's take a look at another one. This we're going to go quicker. Simplify, top's done. Plot the y intercept. Put in zero. Get my table going. X, g of x. If I put in zero, I get three over negative two. Negative three halves, that's negative one and a half. So zero, one and a half right here. So we're right here. Uh, the denominator is at my go to zero here when I'm at two. So I have a vertical asymptote here at two. Um, horizontal asymptote is also going to be the same as the last one because the, the degree here is zero. The degree here is one. Zero is less than one, which is our first degree. The numerator is less than our denominator, so we have zero asymptote. This one looks identical to the last one. It's the same form. I could plug in more points, but you should start to realize that we have these graphs start to look the same. It's going to go like this, which is close enough. And over here, we're going to go something like this. If you're unsure, that's not going right. You should probably come back to that. If you're unsure, then you could plot a point over here. We could plot a point over here if I do two. If I put in three, three minus two is one. Three over one is three. So over here at three, we're up at three. Look how close it was. Look how close that was. Look there. So that would be the point of three. We're supposed to go through. We're pretty close. So you can see the points. You see it. We have three was over at. There you go. So this is not a hard process. They get trickier if they're not factored. So now the simplifying, this one's going to be a little harder because we're going to have to go in and simplify. So we take f of x and we look at it. The numerator factors to x plus 3. This is a difference of squares. x minus 3. And the denominator, that can be factored as well. We need to look and see. We have what factors of 3 that add to negative 2. So we're going to have 3 and 1. Do we want them to multiply to negative? So one of these is going to be negative. One of them is going to be positive. You could use a quadratic formula here if you really had to. But 3 and 1, I want the negative on the 3, the positive on the 1. Because when I add those middle terms together, I'll get the negative 2. And we can see that we can now cross this out. We do have a hole at x equals 3, but we're really graphing x plus 3 over x plus 1, where x cannot equal negative 1 or 3. We have a hole at 3 as well. So let's take a look now at the x, y table, uh, x of, uh, f of x. Uh, plot the zeros. So if they put in 0 here, I'm going to put it in here because it's easier. That's 3 over 1. That's 3. And so I have 0, 1, 2, 3 as my first point. And take a look at the zeros of the denominator. I already found them, so we know we're going to have a, a negative 1. We don't have one at negative 3 because we're only graphing this part, even though it's really going to be the same graph. So we have one at negative 1. So our first x-intercept, our first vertical, our only vertical, is there. And the degrees are the same, so we look at the leading coefficients, leading coefficients, in both this one and this one, it's 1 over 1, so we have y equals 1 as our asymptote, horizontal, and we can see what this shape is going to look like now. Here, we'll do one more test. We'll go over here and we'll graph at negative 2. So if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 3, negative 2 plus 3 over negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, so here we're at negative 1. 
convenient there was no fractions. So negative 2, we're at negative 1. So this graph looks something like this. And just for fun, let's go ahead and put this one in to GeoGebra and test and see how close we came up with. So we discovered that we're graphing f of x, f of x, equals x squared minus 9 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3. Um, the only thing we had to be careful of is there is a hole over here at 3, but we have the asymptotes y equals 1, that's that line, and we had x equals negative 1, there's that line. So our two asymptotes were And that looks pretty close to what we have. In fact, I would say that's really good. Pretty darn close to what our graph was. We got the picture. We have the basic idea of what the graph is. So we'll move on. Try another one. Uh, let's do one more. We'll call this video good. So if we take here and look, this one. We can factor this, simplify it. Let's see what we come up with. Uh, if we look here, we have f of x equals x times x minus 1 in the numerator over x plus 1 in the denominator. There's nothing we can call, cancel out, but this form might be easier to work with. So let's go ahead and check that off. We can plot the y-intercept. I'm going to start my table. x, f of x. I'm plug in 0 here to get the y-intercept. 0 in the numerator over 1 in the denominator gives me 0. So this goes through right here. So we'll have a point right here. At 0, 0. And now we're going to put the zeros of the numerator. Well, we got one of them already. Another zero of the numerator will be when x is 1. So if we put in 1, we get 1 minus 1 is 0 times 1 is 0 over 1 plus 1 is 2, which is still 0. So we also have 1 comma 0. So we have a point right there as well. Now let's take a look at the zeros of the denominator. The zeros of the denominator are going to give us a asymptote. The asymptote is going to be at negative 1, so we have an asymptote right here at negative 1, where x equals negative 1. Uh, the degree, bigger over smaller. If we look at page 144, 2 over 1, that's going to be no horizontal asymptotes. No. Because it's so we don't have any of those. So now we have to look. Now we're going to be really, this, this one could be crazy. We don't know anything about what this looks like. We have two points that are on a line approaching this thing. So we need some more points in here. So let's go ahead and plug some more points in. Let's try, uh, let's try two. So if we try two, two squared, four minus two over two plus 1, 4 minus 2 is 2 thirds. So we're getting a little bit bigger here. We're at 2 thirds. And let's try half, negative a half. That's not going to try that. We don't know. We, we could do that in a minute with the calculator, but we got 2 thirds here. Uh, let's go ahead and try, let's try a negative. So let's try negative 2. Negative 2. I will still get 4. Now it's going to be plus 2. I'm using the first equation. Over negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 
so this is 6, negative 6. So over here we're at negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hmm. Looks like it's going down like that. Maybe like this. And let's we gotta figure out we're coming in like this. How's this working over here? So let's take a look at negative six. We're gonna have to do some fractions, negative a half. We can use a calculator, but if I do negative a half squared, that's uh, a fourth minus minus a negative a half plus a half over a half. Negative a half plus one is a half. So some of you might need a calculator. We can pull one up, but this is two fourths, three fourths times two over one, which is divided by a half. The twos cancel, giving you a two there. This is three halves, or one and a half. So we have three halves here. So we're one and a half right here. One and a half, right there in the middle. So something like that's that's craziness, huh? That's craziness. What's going on here? Is and it's shooting back up? Well, there's one more thing we haven't learned that we need to review right here, and that's what's called a slant asymptote. And this is a case where we have a slant asymptote because the denominator is one less than the numerator. So we're going like this, and then this is shooting up this way some way, and this we could do another point down here. But let's just look at this graph at this point. We keep plotting points and come up with these lines, but let's plot this. Um, we're going to change this to uh, f of x is f of x is really x squared minus x over x plus 1. And so far we had it correct. It came down here. We didn't get underneath here, but we had, there's that negative half and up a half. We got those other points in here, the zero and the one um, is in there. But look at that. That there's definitely another line that's following, and that's what we call our slant asymptote. So what we need to do is find it. See the one and the zero. We need to find what that line is. And the, the way we do that is by taking this and dividing it. Because it's got a difference of degree of one, we're gonna get a slant asymptote. So we divide this, we take x plus 1 and divide into x squared minus x. x is going to x squared one time, x times, x times x is x squared, x times that is plus x, and then when we change our signs and add, we'll get 0 there, those cancel, we'll get negative 2x. So this is our remainder because we can't x oh x can't multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x plus 1 and we get actually plus 2. We're going to multiply the negative 2 and it would be a minus. That's a mess. Let's clean that up. So it was negative 2 times x is negative 2, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and we change our signs and add, those are canceled, and I have a remainder of 2. So I have a remainder of plus 2 over x plus 1. And the cool thing is, is this part right here is our slant asymptote. So if we graph that line y equals x minus 2, which is a first degree linear equation, it's 0, negative 2 is a slope, or negative 2 is the intercept with plus 1 and 2. If we graph that right here, oops, if we graph that right back here, negative 2 is our intercept, 1, 2, 2, and then we're up 1 over 1.
we can get this nice slant acetope that we can put in here. And then we can see, you know, and we have this cool graph. So I think that's enough for now. We'll go ahead and leave that there. Uh, you should probably test looking for these slant aspartopes. That's where you have a degree difference of 1. And when you divide that out, your answer, the y equals 1 half, y equals x minus 2, is your equation that came from the division, x minus 2. Everything but the remainder, that line, is the slant aspartope. Very special case, but you can see this graph works out that way. So enjoy it, practice it, see you in class.